Good evening. Welcome to Bedtime Stories, episode 10, chapter 9 of Where's the Book? Caught Up Loving the Trill One. Four, that is. So it gets a little more interesting. You know, it is a, we're in the middle of a war, so there is going to be some back and forth and back and forth that's going to be going on. But I'll tell you that when it's time for me to tell you that. But first, we are doing a bedtime cocktail. Tonight, we're having making a strawberry daiquiri. And we're using El Dorado aged five years, cast aged. This is what we're using. This is the rum we're using for. It's a five year aged rum by El Dorado. I've had their 12 year and it was awesome. Sauce, ha <laughs> ha, child. So before we mix it into a daiquiri, I'd like to take a sip of it. Um, I put a one jigger in my margarita glass and let's taste it. Mmm. Oh, that's some smooth stuff right there. Mm, mm, mm. Well, we're going to put that remainder in the shaker and we're going to do another jigger. So that'll be two jiggers of rum. Okay, let's close that up. Let's put this out of the way right there. So we have simple syrup that I made. I know this is not the cutest bottle, but I just used one of my old lime juice bottles and I made my own simple syrup. If you want to know the recipe on how to make the simple syrup, it is very easy. It's very simple. If you go back a couple of videos, I tell you about how to make it. It's really just one part water, one part um, sugar. That means so if you use a cup of water, you get you use a cup of sugar, you put it together, you heat it up on the stove until it's liquefied and dissolved. Then you let it cool and then you put it in a container. Okay, so I'm going to do one and a half jiggers of simple syrup because I have frozen strawberries. And I don't think that they're very sweet yet. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to, to check it out. So I want a little more sweetness to the daiquiri. Okay. So, two, one and a half jiggers of simple syrup. And we're going to only do one, a half a jigger of lime juice because I don't want the lime juice to be overpowering like it was with the pineapple remember okay so what i have is some frozen strawberries i so i'm soaking them in some of the rum to kind of help it unfreeze and so that it release maybe some of the flavors that's the hope so i'm gonna take a couple of these strawberries they're sliced frozen they're sliced frozen at Kroger. They were $10 for a big bag. So guess what? A lot of strawberry smoothies for me. Mm -hmm. So I put a few in there and then I'm going to put a few at the bottom of my margarita glass as a garnish. There we go. Now this these strawberries are going to be better with time, you know. You know this, right? So, we've already put a half a jigger of lime juice. We're going to put that aside. Now, we're going to put some ice in the shaker. And shake it until, like, your hands can barely take it because it's so cold. You see how it's freezing up on the outside? That's why I always suggest getting a metal shaker because you can, that is an indicator when you can stop shaking. 
so I'm done shaking now pour over the slices of strawberry strawberry daiquiri booyah a strawberry daiquiri made with frozen sliced strawberries That's fire. That's that was a perfect, perfect mix, child. Perfect mix. Strawberry daiquiri. Oh, that that's everything, child. That's everything. So we're gonna put that over there to be eaten. I mean, to be drink as as I do my commentary. I also am gonna be a little bit of a mukbang because. Um, this is also dinner time for me. Okay, so I'm just have some salsa and some cotton carne dip, queso dip. Mm -hmm. Let's get into chapter nine of Caught Up Loving the Trail 14. Okay, let's get there. Let's get there. So, chapter nine starts off with. Um, Hassan officially making his decision to take over for Scar. But it wasn't an easy decision. He'd been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Now he's at this point where he's in a meeting with Scar and a few other people of the organization. And so it's, um, Scar is asking, so what you going to do? He was like... Fine, I'm down. I'm down with whatever. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, um, he really, you know, it's not something he wanted to do, but he knew that it was something that was meant for him to do, that he's reminiscing and he's realizing that Scar has pretty much been grooming him for this moment in time. He's been grooming him, but it's hard because he doesn't want to take it. He wants Scar to be alive. I'm still a little frustrated with Scar because he didn't have to go through this. He could have prolonged his life had he did what he was supposed to do from the beginning. Saint doesn't like this because... That means that's another person that's close to him. The few people that he lets into his inner circle, another one is going to die. You know what I'm saying? He trusts lost um, Blanca, his fake sister. Um, now I have to lose my father figure, you know, this is crazy, but he's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. So Scar, he doesn't make a big to do, but he just nods his head like, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, there's some things I need you to do, I need you to meet. Some people that you've already met, but they need to know you now are in a different position. You need to know them from a different standpoint. They need to know that you're now in charge. You're going to be taking over. And, and Satan is like, Paul, wait a minute, hold up. Whoa, I ain't the boss yet. You know what I'm saying? And Scar kind of like, and then he signals for the other guys to go ahead and leave them alone. And once everybody leaves, Hassan, a.k.a. Scott, I mean, Saint, is looking at him like, why are you rushing the process, yo? You ain't gone yet. And Scott kind of silently, he just kind of taps on the table that he's sitting on his, de in his, on his desk. The table that he's sitting at is his desk. <laughs> okay. He says... Look, Saint, 
I just got word from my doctor that they're arranging for me to have hospice services. Like, this is, and Saint is like, he's looking at him, he's like, and then he does the dramatic turn away. Because he doesn't want to continue glaring at him because he's pissed off at this point. He's like, yo, what's really good? We haven't never held anything from each other like this. What What's going on? How long you knew you was going to be on hospice? Like, and Scar was like, yo, yo, look, I've never held anything from you. I just got this call this morning. So that's kind of why I'm I'm pressing you right now. To see if I can do trust my business to you, or do I have to find somebody else? You know what I'm saying? But I know it's you. You're the only one that can really handle this business and can run it with the integrity in which I ran it. So I feel like. All right, just some BS. Now, prior to him meeting, or while he was in the meeting, his phone had been ringing. He got a one call from an unknown number. It's like, hm, you can finish, you can wait. If you are that important, you can leave a message or get blocked, because I don't got time for this mess. Then he got a call from Keon. And then a few minutes later, we got a call from Zeus. It was at the end of his meeting with Scar. So he went ahead and took Zeus. He, I mean, he said, he told Scar, look, I got to take this call. I'll, you know, I'll prepare to go ahead and meet these people, travel back to Panama and meet these people you want me to meet and make sure everything is handled. But let me go ahead and take this one. You know, part of my duties now. So his son is like, um, I keep calling by his, red, his government name, but Saint answers the phone. He's like, yo, what's up? Y'all called me three times. Y'all been calling me back to back three times. Zeus is what you talking about? Keon just called you, then I called you. Look, we have an issue. We've been hit um, real bad. Um, a few of our main spots have been hit. Some of our people are down again. Um, so Saint is like, well, were you with, were you with Keon? He's like, no, it was Noah that was with Keon. We like, Why? He's like, I, mean, I can't be with him all the time. I was handling other business. I said, okay, but I'm, he said, I am with Keon now. He said, put me on speakerphone. What the hell happened? So he explained, they hit up this, this, and they took that product and everything. It's like, so Saint basically ended the conversation. Look. Get your ish together. I got things that I got. I got big business that I got to take care of here. Okay. Get it together. Okay. Keon went to try to say something like, all right, I hear you, ma'am. And I just hang up the phone like, Atlanta is becoming a bigger issue than it should be. I don't understand what's going on. Jamal then started something that should have never happened over his baby mama. And it just should never happen. And you know it. Get it together, Keon. I need you to step up and be the lead that you are. I'm saying hunting's up. And start preparing his mind for these other meetings that he has to do. So he pulls off and heads home. 
Then the next thing is Toya or Toy, Latoya Ford is sitting at this or at a stool at um the rim shop, which is owned now by her ex sister in law Tarika and Tyson's mom Cynthia. So she's like, I don't know what kind of help I in her head I can help her out with, but you know, I can give her what I know. She said, well, I don't really need, I need you to look at my books. I really need to know, is it worth me hanging on to these businesses or should I just go ahead and sell them? Like the rim shop does fine because the guys here pretty much, you know, this is, um, it works by itself. But the laundromat, I can't seem to compete with the newer um a uh, fresher laundry mat that just opened up down the street. So Toy was like, oh, her, she was thinking she was going to ask her how to make her business thrive. And she's like, in Toy's head, she was thinking, look, these are the two businesses I really have very little to do with. They were laundering businesses, if you know what I mean. So she really didn't have much to do with those businesses. Because um, it wasn't really in her genre. But um, when she asked her like, to, to let her, to help evaluate, should she sell or hold on to the laundromat? Toy was relieved because she's an accountant, so she can at least look at the numbers and say, oh, yeah, you're losing too much money. You should sell. So they slightly started conversating about how uh, Tarika really feels good about the fact that they have a great relationship after the death of her brother. And Toy was like, you know what? There's a big difference, and I'm thankful about it. He's like, yeah. He said, I wish it could be that way with my mom. And Toy was like, unfortunately, that probably would never be. Because, you know, last time your mom showed up at the bakery, girl, and then accused me of changing Tyson or being his downfall like I was the reason why he's dead and then Tarika started to go into you know my mom has been on this whole thing and she's about to explain to her what her mother meant by but then Toy got a call from Zeus so she's gonna take that one she's like yo I mean, hold on. Let me get this call. This is this is my man. Hey, what's up, bro? He said, everything's crazy right now. I need some help. I said, yeah. She's like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, what do you need? Well, um, I'll meet you. If you will be home soon, I'll meet you, and then we can talk about it at the house. Right. He said, sure, I'm about to be um I'm about fifteen minutes away. He said, Yeah, I'm driving around. I could be there in about fifteen minutes. All right. So in their conversation, Zeus had this said some cryptic answers to some of Toya's questions. So she knew that this was something really big that he really needed and he can't talk about it right now. But if you want the lowdown, if you want the tea, girl, hurry up and get home. <laughs> so she knew, so she's automatically have 
her alerts up like, I don't know what it is, but it got to be something big if Zeus is asking me. And I might not want to know what it is because it will put me back in the loop of all that stuff. But, and that's what, where we ended with Tori, like, wondering, you know, heading home to find out what she, he needs her help with. And try not to be involved in the business that she walked away from about two years ago now in the book. So... My question is, now that Zeus, now that Saint is going to be the head ninja in charge of the joints, and with Atlanta being all just continually having his back and forth with Champ, not knowing how to sit down and talk to this man, because I believe a lot of it would come with just a conversation. Will Hassan pull her back into the business? Or knowing that she's the best for the business in Atlanta, will she join her man, Hassan, a.k.a. Saint, in running the SCAR Enterprises Mm-hmm. Or will she stay on the side and allow her man to go running off with Desiree as his woman with her never really knowing what he, he does for a living? Or will he tell Desiree? Look, he and really sit her down and say, Look, I'm my business is not in trades. Stocks and bonds and all that. I'm in the drug business. Will he tell her that situation? Will he tell her the truth? I'm, I apologize for the gas, but whatever. I shouldn't say whatever. Because what you think matters to me. But I'm mixing up another uh, strawberry daiquiri. Because that one felt good. I over poured. So, hmm, that part. Um, but will... Will... He bring her back in? Or bring Desiree to his side? Will she let her man go? To another woman? Will we find out that Desiree knew all along that he was in the drug business and she's in a friend of the of champs? Just saying. I'm just saying. How is the author going to twist this story? And I am going to say I have read ahead to chapter 10. And some things we're going to find out in chapter 10. So, what y'all think? What y'all think? Y'all think um, Hassan is going to bring Toy back into the business? Or will it be Zeus? Or will it be just the fact of her accepting her skill at running running a business like she is a gift she's she's gifted in running business you know what i'm saying especially the ones that she like like her bakery like she likes to cook so of course she's gonna promote that but that's all i have for you I will see you next time on Bedtime Stories. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have suggestions of the next black author to review their book, let me know. Please put it in the comments. 
And um, if you like these cocktails or you know of a cocktail you want me to try, put it in the comments. All right. That's all I have for you. I'll have a wonderful evening. Good night. Bye. Okay. Bye.